using the full frame fx30 not i shouldn't say that okay how about this and producing the almost full frame fx30 Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be looking at how you can turn your Sony FX30 into a full frame or almost full frame camera by reducing the 1.5 times crop factor to a mere 1.08 times crop. Thus giving us a similar field of view as you would have on a full frame camera, even if we're technically still shooting on an APS-C size sensor. None of that is really going to change. To all the experts that clicked on this video just to kind of fact check everything I say in this video to you, I want to say welcome to Focal Reducers over Simplified. Now the magic or the physics, if you will, is done with something called a Focal Reducer, also known as a Speed Booster, which unlike a regular lens adapter has a set of optic elements that will take the larger image circle of a full frame lens and kind of make it fit onto a smaller APS-C size sensor. To give you a quick example, here we are looking at a 50mm lens on the Sony FX30 without a speed booster. Now, if we go ahead and add a speed booster, our field of view suddenly gets much wider. Another benefit of using a speed booster is that we're also getting one additional stop light since we're kind of concentrating everything coming through the lens including the light down to a smaller surface just like a like a magnifying glass so an f 2.8 lens will become an f2 lens in terms of brightness and exposure so in the case of our 50 mil lens in the previous example that f 1.8 now becomes an f 1.3 if you shoot wide open now, due to the loss of physics, and I believe some degree of witchcraft regarding the way the image is actually stretched and squeezed by the speed booster in order to make this work, the depth of field will not become one stop shallower, even if the lens is now one stop brighter, since the focusing of the transferred light is what's, what's causing that added brightness. I hope that makes at least a tiny bit of sense. This can become somewhat confusing without diving too deep into the actual physics and the, the calculations. On an APS-C camera like the Sony FX30, a speed booster obviously opens up a whole lot of possibilities when it comes to lens selection and the way you're going to be able to use a lens like a, like a 50 mil but we all know that shooting on a 50 on an APS-C camera with the the crop that we're normally dealing with can be somewhat tricky in in some situations especially if we want to be able to shoot at 100 or 120 frames per second which also adds that additional crop in camera on the fx30 higher frame rates also obviously requires more light which we also will have one stop extra of with speed booster. Now, so far there seems like there's all pros and not a whole lot of cons, but I promise you we'll get to the fine print here in just a second. Before that, I just want to circle back to the lenses. Like I said in the beginning of this video, we are taking the bigger image circle of a full frame lens and squeezing it down to fit onto the smaller APS-C or Super 35 sensor. And in order to make this work, you will have to use either full frame DSLR lenses or um, cinema glass that's full frame. You can also use vintage glass like SLR lenses, but they have to be full frame lenses. APS-C lenses, on the other hand, have a smaller image circle and will therefore give you this kind of porthole heavy vignette on a speed booster. There is a few exceptions like the Sigma 1835 that will vignette on the wider end, but as you kind of zoom in to around 23 mil, 24 mil, the vignette kind of goes away. So you will have a window between 23, 24, all the way up to uh, 35 mil on that lens without any vignette. But it all kind of comes down to, uh, to each and, and every individual lens. You can't, or at least I haven't been able to use the clear image zoom to zoom past the vignette when I'm using an APC type lens. 
that would have been great, especially if you want to be able to use the uh, the Sigma 1835 since it's such a fast lens and with the <laughs> with the speed booster it's like a f1.3. So using that when you're running and gunning and you want to be able to zoom in and out really fast without having to worry about zooming out too far and getting that nasty thing yet. So far I haven't been able to use uh, clear image zoom to uh, to get around this problem. One interesting thing though that I discovered while trying to use the little zoom rocker on the FX30 was that the camera actually displays the lens data as it interprets the lens data from the, the speed booster onto the little camera display here. So on the Sigma 35 here, if we look at the 35 millimeter end of that lens, the camera shows this as a 24 millimeter lens, which actually makes a lot of sense the way the speed booster actually works and the fact that a 24 millimeter lens on an APS-C camera is roughly the uh, the full frame equivalent of 35 mil. So that was kind of interesting. The speed booster that I use is the Metabones Ultra EF2E mount. The Metabones Ultra supports lens communication with autofocus, eye detect and optical image stabilization and all that fun stuff. However, the autofocus performance will take a turn for the worst when you're using the speed boost, which is usually the case anyway when it comes to adapters, except the MC11 and a few others in my experience. The lens that you're using also comes into play when it comes to autofocus performance and all that on the Canon 50mm f1.8, which didn't show any vignetting by the way, the autofocus wasn't super reliable and steady as you can see here on these images. It worked way better on the Sigma 1835, even if it felt a little slow at times. Vlogging wasn't a problem either with the Sigma 1835. You get a nice wide frame when you're using the speed booster, even if you're dealing with those vignette borders here. I wouldn't necessarily recommend the 1835 for vlogging. It's kind of a heavy and bulky lens, but you are getting autofocus as you can see, but in in most cases, or at least in some cases, I would say that it's better to use manual focus, which I think still is kind of a fair trade off for that wider field of view and that extra stop of light when you need it. Now, before we wrap things up, I just want to touch briefly on image quality when using a speed booster. Obviously, I'm no expert at this but I think it's kind of an interesting topic in itself. We are adding more physical elements to our optical pathway, so there's gonna be some form of image degradation. There's really no way around that. At the same time, we're also getting kind of an optical downsampling, taking that wider or that bigger image circle and kind of squeezing it down to our smaller APC size sensors. So I think it's going to come down to the type of lens you're shooting with, uh, the scene you're working with, the lighting conditions and all that before you can really start to see either some potential flaws or improvements when it comes to things like lens distortion. Maybe you're getting some, some extra sharpness and, and that kind of stuff. But so far I haven't been able to, to see any major issues or flaws, pixel peeping through the, uh, the footage that I've shot, but then again, I'm no expert. And the Metabone speed boosters have a reputation of being among the better ones when it comes to optical and autofocus performance, which in return don't make them the most affordable option if you wanna buy one of these new. This one here, the, uh, the Ultra currently sits at around 649 new on both Amazon and b and I was lucky I was able to pick mine up used for about 230 bucks, which I realize is a super great deal, but I will leave a couple of links down below for you guys if you want to take your time and, and go through some of the different options and see what the pricing is like and all that fun stuff. Overall, I think if you're an FX30 or any APS-C or Super 35 shooter, I think Speed Boosters is a really, really neat little gadget to kind of fold into your workflow. Getting more use out of your 50 mil or even tighter lenses and also obviously getting that extra stop of light can be really, really helpful. So yeah, I think that's going to be it. Thank you so much for stopping by and please stub your toe on that like button on your way out to the next video if you feel like it. But in the meanwhile, I will be here working on the next video and well, that's it. Bye.